A vertical wall, a green wall, or a vertical green wall is nothing more than trying to emulate what is in nature living on a rock face or living in trees. However, you have to be horticulturally aware from the design aspect and that the plants will survive together. Welcome to my world here. I get to go around and find plants for people. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I look at every plant, inspect every plant, and I have to be aware of the growth stage. The plant can be either too large or too small. I'm looking for colorful uh, bromeliads and uh, shade-oriented uh, plants for this next project I have going on. Look at all that. That's like amazing. And these are too big for my project, so I need them a little smaller, but yet look at how beautiful and green they are. Here is my favorite plant. This is called a metanella. Look at that. Now once again, these are too big, so I have to research and look for these in smaller pots that they fit in the walls that I'm trying to do. Now, if we walk over here, these are just stunning. These are just beautiful color. You can't, you can't get any more perfect. I mean, it's just, you just want to lie down here, or I do. <laughs> One of my favorite walls that I did was for an amazing company, Chrome Hearts, in the design district in Miami. You are walking down an urban, dry, hot street, and the next thing you know, you look in a door, and here you have an 80-foot long vertical wall that is 20 feet high, leading to the front door of this very beautiful store called Chrome Hearts. We've taken an urban environment that was brick and cement and sterile, and we've turned it into a lush, soft oasis that is very tranquil. And I am so lucky to have worked with Chrome Hearts and their design team in creating a really beautiful space. Rodrigo, my, my friend from uh, South America, from Venezuela. For me, this is an emotional job. It's um, art. So it comes from here, not, not too much from here. Gross. This one doesn't like as much full sun or can. What do you think? No, I'm putting under the war frame. So the war frame is protected from the sun. The first thing I do is uh, do a site analysis to see if a vertical wall can go where a client wants to put it. This one is actually gonna go here. You know, see that hole there? Yeah. It's sun, but it has a lot of shade from the other fern. And it's kind of the same texture, but a different color. So it's gonna kind of continue. Yeah, the second thing we do, we do what's called a rough construction. And generally that is a wood frame, or sometimes we will directly attach the felt to cement walls uh, or things of that sort. The panel goes from here to here, from here to here, and then the hoses go inside. They are all interconnected to the water. And the irrigation is probably the biggest challenge and the most interesting aspect of a wall. These little hoses you see up there, so that's all interconnected. Every few buckets there is one and it drips water. The water operates by gravity. The drop just falls and falls and falls and falls. And in the way it wets everything. Just like Mother Nature, if it rains on the top of a hill, it goes straight down the rock face. I buy the felt with pockets in them, and then what I do is I attach these pieces of felt 
to the wall in a shingled form so the water will go straight down and then I simply put the plants in that. And the beauty of that is the plants will go in there and they will live. And if I do have a plant that does not live, I can simply take it out and replace it. This is a very dry felt. This one uh, holds a lot of humidity. You just put it here. And then you come in here and then we're going to design it and come like that. I mean, look at the texture of those. That's how cool it is. Sometimes uh, nature will throw something in here, a seed and it can grow well and you can leave it, why not? If it looks well and it doesn't hurt the other plants, you can leave it. I think the calathea is one of the best plants in a wall. Yeah. yeah. Yes? That's why I'm gonna put it next to it because I think they can compete and thrive well together. So even though we're gonna put it up there, mm -hmm. I think here it will also work well and you can see these textures. So we have the vertical wall going up here, and then we have your terrestrial plants down here. Yes. So the merger of the terrestrial plants and the merger of the vertical is challenging and fun and a, a design aspect of it. It's like plants are like human beings. You can be together and you do fine, but maybe this one doesn't like this one too much. And that's okay. It's nothing wrong about it. You just need to know what to merge, and then there will be harmony. I am so fortunate to have people in many parts of the world that I can co-collaborate with and learn. So it's, it's time-consuming, it's not easy, but I love it. What I'm doing right now is just doing some spot watering as we just installed this wall maybe about a month ago. I have this wall 100% on a drip irrigation. However, I like to baby my walls for the first month or so, so they really take a shine and are happy. I don't know who's liking this more, me or them. I don't know why I'm into vertical gardens. I'm really not a person who likes heights, but when I'm doing, doing vertically gardening, I don't know. Plants, very simply, are positive energy. And who doesn't like positive energy? <laughs> and I believe it makes people feel better. And that's what I'm trying to create spaces that people just feel peaceful and happy and they can transcend, they can be calm at one point, but yet they could be introspective at another point. And it's extremely exciting to be with different people who have different visions and different ideas, um, yet we still have the same passion for what we're doing.